What's up everyone, my name is Crosby. If you're new to my channel, then you may not know that I spent four months in the beautiful country of Mexico earlier this year and I am officially back in Mexico, but more specifically, Mexico City. Good morning from Mexico City. I cannot explain how good it feels to be back in Mexico. I'm just so happy. It really feels like a second home here. And Mexico City is actually a city I've never been to, but so many people rave about it. Like literally everywhere I go in Mexico, people are either based in Mexico City or they've been here and absolutely fell in love with it. And I'm not a huge city person. I tend to gravitate towards smaller towns and coastal towns, but I've just heard too many amazing things not to come explore. This is my my fifth day here in Mexico City and I wanted to give myself a few days to kind of settle in get my bearings and just kind of get some first impressions like in my head before I made this video and yeah I feel like I have a pretty good sense of like right off the bat how I feel you know what my impressions are and so throughout this video I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle them in as it makes sense and I have some really fun things planned for the day the first one starts with a city bike So quite literally the very first impression that I had driving into Mexico City from the airport was how much green space there is throughout this city. And that is so key for me because if it's too like urban, industrial, that's not really my vibe, especially for a long period of time. I need to feel like I can go for a walk and you know, go maybe hang out at a park. And I've been doing that like every single day that I've been here. It's really, really walkable here as well, which is super nice. And yeah, so the green space just makes such a big difference in a city like this it really doesn't feel like a huge bustling crazy city at least in the neighborhoods that I've been in um, but first things first let's get on our city bike I'm gonna claim this one I just downloaded the bike app it's called like eco Biki or something like that you download the app and then you can kind of decide like how many days you want to rent for so I did the three day but I've never ridden one before so I am going to rent it now and then take you to a new part of town that I haven't explored yet We, I am heading to Paseo de la Reforma, which is like the biggest, most extensive street in the entire city. And it's shut down every Sunday from eight to two for cyclists and pedestrians only. But it looks like way more other streets in the city are also shut down. I was just on Calle Mazatlan where I'm staying and it was completely shut down. So now I'm just following a herd of cyclists to the main street, but this is super fun. Okay, we are officially on Paseo de la Reforma. This is so festive. I cannot believe this entire street shuts down every single Sunday from eight to two. Like this is the main street in Mexico City. I think it just really shows like how much they prioritize, you know, people getting out and being active and coming out with community. So yeah, I'm loving this. And the architecture is crazy. Like huge, tall skyscrapers, I guess sort of skyscrapers. And there's a really cool statue coming up in front of me. Well, usually this road is shut down for cyclists right now, but they actually made us detour. I ended up getting off my bike because it's just insane. There's a huge women's march happening. So it's the next morning and I am walking to go get my morning coffee, which leads me to my next like huge impression and that is that the cafe scene here in mexico city is huge there are so many amazing beautiful aesthetic cafes with like amazing coffee and food and great places to work i've been like switching up where i go every single day to work at just different cafes so i'm going to one that i really do like it's super small and cute um but i might go to another one later today to work so stay tuned so 
I've been trying to save a little bit of money in the morning by making breakfast at home. So I'll usually like go out and get a coffee first if I'm like really craving it. Um, and then I will go back and make breakfast there. But I actually have laundry as well that I need to do this morning. So I'm gonna go to a place called La Dirty, La Dirty, which is like right around the corner from here and get that situated. And I will say, it's so nice knowing a bit of Spanish in Mexico City. I just find that it's a lot easier to get around. That's definitely an impression of Mexico City that I really like is that people automatically start speaking Spanish to you, at least to me. Um, you know, even in areas like La Condesa and Roma Norte, places that there's a lot of expats, you know, most people can speak English if, you know, you really need them to. But I really like how the majority of people at like cafes, restaurants, taxi drivers, they immediately speak Spanish to me so I can practice. But I will say that it is really helpful to know some basic phrases and it also just really elevates your travel experience to be able to understand what people are saying understand signs not feel like a total fish out of water so what i've been doing literally every morning while i'm drinking my coffee usually is i will do 15 minutes on Babel. it's super easy i keep it on the front tab of my phone so it's top of mind which is why i am so excited that Babel is sponsoring today's video they are one of the top language learning apps in the world with more than 10 million subscriptions including me whether I'm at a local market buying produce, making sure they dry my clothes on low at the laundromat. I literally did this like an hour ago. Es posible para secar en temperatura baja. Being proficient in the local language not only helps to be more immersed in the local culture, but it also helps to keep you out of unsafe situations, especially when you're traveling solo like I do often. So since I've been out of Spanish speaking countries for the last few months, I have been using Babbel for 15 minutes a day to make sure that I don't lose all the progress that I made. And I know that 15 minutes doesn't sound like much, but Babbel has proven that you can start learning a new language in just three weeks by practicing 10 to 20 minutes a day. And with the lifetime subscription, which is what I have, you will get access to all the languages on Babbel's platform for life. So go ahead and click the link right down below in the description box to get 60% off of your subscription. And let me know in the comments what language you are planning to learn first. So the next thing that I have felt so, so much and that I've heard, you know, echoed from a lot of other people that have come here who are foreigners is that this city just has a really good energy about it, a really positive vibe. The locals are incredibly friendly and welcoming and I have felt nothing but just, you know, positive welcoming vibes coming here. I think a lot of it has to do with the weather, quite honestly. It's like very sunny and beautiful all the time. It's a little overcast today, but like for the most part, it's like high 60s, low 70s. And then obviously you have so much green space and everyone's really active on their bikes, running around. It's just like, really positive at all times and yeah you can just like really feel it when you're here also side note but i'm heading to a new cafe right now to grab some lunch and knock out a few hours of work the reviews look great so they have good wi-fi so we shall see i'll keep you posted So I just left a yoga class in Roma Norte. I'll put the name here. It was so wonderful. It was affordable. They're like a donation basis. So usually people do around like a hundred pesos. And the instructor at the yoga class went to the same high school as me. So that was obviously an insane coincidence. And yeah, he was wonderful. I really want to go back before I leave. Yeah, and then I just went and picked up a few things. I'm just kind of running errands right now. Um, the day's flying by, but it's kind of reminding me of another impression that I'm really having and that's just kind of typical of big cities like Mexico City and it's just really a very livable place. You really have everything you need here, everything that you can expect in a big city in the US. You can pretty much find it somewhere in Mexico City. In a lot of the places that I have traveled throughout Mexico, it's really not a given that you're just going to have everything you need at your disposal from your favorite brand of deodorant to, you know, a plethora of supplies of 
lotion or tampons or like things like that but you know it just comes with being in a big city you really have all of those kind of amenities and just the variety of options at your disposal and that leads into things also like gyms i went to a gym the other day it was so nice the class was amazing the facilities were so good and yeah that's just one of the pros of being in a big city and just with talking to people that have lived here or are based here they really echo that it's just a very livable place a place where you're not like struggling to find something it's really accessible you know somewhere in mexico city also i am currently in one of my favorite places in la condesa and in you know mexico city in general which is parque mexico and i'm right next to the dog park if you haven't been able to hear the dogs barking by now it's a massive dog park that's a small impression actually is everyone have dogs here i've been having such doggy fever <laughs> like in really cute dogs and everyone's like on walks with them every day all day and i'm just like i miss my dog i miss mojo and that kind of leads me into the other thing that i kind of wish i touched on earlier it's a bit of a disclaimer but mexico city is so big i don't think everyone totally understands how massive Mexico City is. It's bigger than New York City and every neighborhood in this city is so different, so diverse and it's really hard to make generalizations about a city of this size with such a diverse range of people and you know neighborhoods and stuff like that. So as I'm talking about these things it's really important to remember that yeah I'm really giving my impressions based on where in the city I have been. I spent the most of my time in La Condesa that's the neighborhood I've been staying in. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's one of the main neighborhoods that most expats and foreigners stay in. There is La Condesa where I'm staying. There's Roma Norte, which is another really great part. Personally, I like La Condesa a bit better. It's a little more green, a little less chaotic, a little cozier feeling. Um, and then you have Polanco, which is like the bougie part of Mexico City. I've heard people refer to it as the Beverly Hills of Mexico. Okay, quick pause. I'm making a little pit stop at Mercado Michoacan. Get some produce. I am running low. But yeah, I obviously haven't explored nearly any of Mexico City as far as how big it is. You know, there's other neighborhoods like Juarez, Centro, I've been to those briefly, of Coyoacan, and so many others that are amazing to explore and have such wonderful museums and culture and history. Um, but yeah, I'm just still kind of like getting my bearings because I'm here totally by myself. I will discuss like how I feel safety-wise later in this, this video, but yeah, I'm really loving where I'm staying and I'm hoping to vlog kind of a day in the life or a few days in the life um, before I leave so you can kind of just see what the neighborhoods are like here. But yeah, it's been wonderful, um, I will say. I have been spending quite a bit of money on food because I just have been like really overwhelmed and I don't know, like the kitchen at my place isn't amazing so I've just been eating out a lot and it's been not easy on the wallet so I'm glad I have my literally holding a bag of huevos because I don't want them to crack in my bag but yeah hopefully I'll save a little bit of money for my last few days here but um yeah that's the vibes and I'm also gonna go get some fresh bread right now and then to this other like whole food store not whole foods it's like the bulk food store with like oats rice beans stuff like that they're really affordable here too Okay, so I'm back at my Airbnb. So I thought I would do a quick haul of everything I bought just to give you like kind of an idea of what you can expect to spend on like groceries. I'll touch on, you know, other places like cafes and stuff like that later. So I went to Estado Natural, which is right down the street from where I'm staying. And they have quite a few of these in La Condesa and Roma Norte that I've seen. And they're a really affordable way to get like bulk food items without having to go to a supermarket. So I just got a few things because like I said I'm leaving in about four or five days so I don't need a ton but I got some more oats um, I still have a little left over but I've been eating oats for breakfast every morning it's about like this much so not too much oats are always like basically free I think it was like four pesos for a hundred grams or something like that um, then I also they have a whole thing of everything but the bagel seasoning which I just think is hysterical so I actually got a lot of this because I don't think they have this in Oaxaca City and that's where I'm going next so I think I probably got the equivalent of like a normal sized bottle you'd get at Trader Joe's and then I got some more hemp hearts yeah like I don't actually know how much of this I got I spent 116 pesos for that 
And then at the uh, Mercado Michoacan, I got some bananas. So four bananas for my oats. I got two avocados and then I got two tomatoes. I got this the other day, but this is just apple cider vinegar and this is what I use to clean all of my produce. Um, so I used it to clean my strawberries the other day. I'll use it to clean my tomatoes. And then I also got three little limes. I also got four eggs um, and I spent 80 pesos at the market for all of that. Is that everything? Oh no, I got also just two pieces of bread from Garcia Madero, like this type of thing. I believe this is sourdough. I asked if they had masa madre and they gave me these two for 20 pesos total. So I'm going to make a little bit of a feast. I'm hungry and take a shower and then yeah, see what the day brings. So I have yet to touch on one of the most obvious parts about why I love Mexico so much, and that is the food. And Mexico City is famous for being a total foodie city, but what not everyone knows is that it is very vegan, veggie friendly. I don't eat meat, so I was very excited to kind of check out the veggie scene. So I'm taking you to one of my go-to spots that I've been to like three times already, and I think you're gonna love it. Well, my grand plan earlier was to get my tacos to go, which I did, and then I was gonna go eat up on the beautiful terrace, but there's like a big gathering happening, like a big dinner that I guess people have planned. They're sitting out there and it's actually really cute, but I'm gonna just um, eat my food here in my room. Very glamorous. But I wanted to, well, first of all, obviously I'm gonna show you the tacos I got. I got four tacos for 80 pesos. Two of them are El Pastor, which is like the basic tacos. Those are 15, and then I got like two specialty ones um, for 25 each. And yeah, the two specialty ones I got was, one was Seitan al Chimichurri, and then the other one was, oh, it's called El Alambre, which I think there's mushrooms in that. But this is what it looks like when it's to go. It's gonna kind of be a bit messy, but it's in this little bag. But basically, I wanted to chat with you guys about the cost of living in Mexico City. Obviously, like I've been saying, Mexico City is massive and the cost of living is really going to vary based on where you are. So the three most expensive neighborhoods, which are also where most expats and foreigners tend to stay, are La Condesa, which is where I'm staying, uh, Roma Norte, and Palenco. Um, so I am staying in a one bedroom, obviously, and I'm sharing the kitchen and the bathroom with a few other people. And for 11 nights, I'm spending about 500 USD. I will say you can definitely find places lower than this, but I ended up booking this place very, very last minute because I didn't like where I was staying when I first got here. So yeah, I booked this place on a whim and it's been wonderful. Honestly, the location is perfection. I have been really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, it's really gonna depend on where you are in the city. Um, you know, obviously the restaurants and cafes and grocery stores and markets are also going to be a bit more expensive in those neighborhoods as well. Another popular place where some people go if you're more on the budget side is Coyoacan. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of the general thing. And here, like for a coffee, I always get a cappuccino with oat milk. Cappuccinos are usually a base price at like 50 or 60 pesos and then for the oat milk it's usually an extra like 10 or so and then an americano is maybe like 40 or 50. so yeah i mean in terms of like comparing it to other parts of mexico it's definitely more expensive than most other places i've traveled in mexico i'd say the only place that kind of was about the same maybe a little less was sayulita just because it's a really popular tourist place um but yeah oaxaca city is much more affordable than mexico city um san cristobal is much more affordable probably the most affordable place i've been in mexico um but that all to say it's still a lot less than you would you know spend in most places especially most big cities in the US or Canada or Australia or the UK etc but with any big city is going to come you know a little higher of a cost um, but you know I think it's been great I haven't really been drinking or anything so I don't have any sort of idea about that so yeah that's kind of the 
general consensus that I am getting with the cost of living here. But if you have different experiences, if you've been to Mexico City and you know you have a different experience or maybe you stayed in a specific neighborhood, I would love to get your insight down below in the comments. I'm super curious. But I'm gonna dig into these tacos because your girl is hungry. I did a workout this morning at Wolf Terrace, which is the gym I've been going to. They have really cool classes. And yeah, we did like a leg workout today and it was great, but I am definitely feeling it and I need to eat. Um, also, I was going to touch on safety in this video, but that's like a whole conversation that I think I'm gonna save for the next video because I do have a lot to say about how I feel here in Mexico City as a solo female traveler, um, especially because this is really like the first time I've been 100% alone like since traveling solo and I know that sounds kind of weird but usually when I'm traveling solo I stay in co-living spaces or hostels um, or I meet up with friends but I'm not doing that here for a few reasons but I think I have like a different insight now um, you know being here without anyone else to like walk around the city with um, having a camera has been a whole thing so I'm going to touch on that a lot more in my next video so make sure you are subscribed to see that also, I don't want to spill them, but like, I'm so excited right now. I got this salsa roja, it's the less spicy. Oh, I just got a huge chunk on here. But yeah, so that is about it for today's video. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was a really helpful insight into maybe what you can expect when arriving in Mexico City for the first time. Obviously, says the title of this video, first impressions. This is my first impressions. I have not been here super, super long, and I know there is so much more of Mexico City that I have yet to experience, so don't come for me if I didn't touch on everything, but definitely stay tuned for the next video because it's going to be more about what I get up to in the city, places I'm going to go sightsee. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited to share that with you, but in the meantime, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.